A carbon credit is a permit that allows the company that holds it to emit a certain amount of carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases. One credit permits the permission of a mass equal to one ton of carbon dioxide. Companies get set number of credits which decline over time. They can sell any excess to another company. A government issues a limited number of annual permits that allows companies to emit a certain amount of carbon dioxide. The total amount permitted thus becomes the cap on emissions. Companies are taxed if they produce a higher level of emission than their permits allow. Companies that reduce their emissions can sell or trade unused permits to another company. But the government lowers the number of permits each year, thereby lowering the total emissions cap. That makes the permits more expensive. In fact, Tata Chemicals in a recent call alluded to the fact that UK emission trading system prices shot up from around 25 to 30 pounds per MT to around 75 pounds and that impacted companies' margins. That's how carbon credits impact businesses. But of course, there are pros as well as cons to the system. While pros include the fact that it creates an exchange value for emissions and that a cap and trade program offers an incentive for companies to invest in cleaner technologies in order to avoid buying permits that will increase in cost every year. On the flip side, corporates can get involved in greenwashing and there could be wrong accounting of these credits. Sometimes the prices of these credits can also be artificially low or very high. Now let's talk about voluntary carbon offsets. Voluntary carbon markets enable businesses, governments, non-profit organizations, universities, municipalities and individuals to offset their emissions outside a regulatory regime. This is by financing the avoidance or reduction of emissions from other sources. It is a growing market. In fact, issuance of voluntary carbon credits has increased five-fold since Paris Agreement 2015 and the total value of annual traded voluntary credits is expected to exceed $1 billion in 2021 for the first time. Estimates suggest that total value of traded voluntary credits anywhere between $10 billion and $180 billion by 2030. Now, Article 6 of the 2015 Paris Agreement, the provision that determines how countries can reduce emissions through carbon credit trading, was a primary focus of COP26 as well. This article gives tools to countries to avoid double counting and get private capital flowing to developing countries. Lack of regulation is one of the key concerns for these carbon markets and the view is that it could be largely self-regulated. But with carbon trading market gaining prominence, question is, how will it be done responsibly?